Hi guys, welcome back. Like I promised in my last video, I decided that I was going to do either some partials or some big ones or some little ones. And I've decided that I was going to do a 30 by 38. I love this picture of Marilyn Monroe. It is a partial. And it's from, I think, New Frog or Peggy Pie. This is one of the ones that I had purchased a very long time ago. And what I'm doing, what I do is no matter how big or small my diamond paintings are, I always kit them up. I do not work out of bags. I hate that. I just hate it. So, I got my lockables. I got my tray, I got my painting, and I got my little bags. So what I usually do is I have a label maker and I will label my lockables and then empty the baggies that match the numbers or what have you and put them on there. So I just figure I come on and like a kitten chat and random video why everyone's diamond painting or lifing and whatnot so let's get started on peg on new frog or peggy by these are numbered one through twelve there's twelve colors in this painting and each bag or one of the bags you will see a serial number which matches the serial number on your canvas. So you will always know what diamonds go with what paint. So I'm going to get started. And what I usually do is I cut all the bags of drills apart. Hope everyone's having a good day. Good morning. Drinking lots of coffee, because that's what us diamond painters do best, is drink coffee and diamond paint. And I wouldn't have it any other way. So this is what I'm doing today, and then later, since it's Super Bowl Sunday, happy Super Bowl Sunday, y'all, I am going to diamond in between spending time with the family and watching the Super Bowl which I'm not a particularly football fan but I'll watch it the kids are having a couple of friends over and we're gonna do chicken wings so yeah it should be fun but in between you know I'm gonna be do some, doing some diamond painting so what I'm gonna do here now is this canvas doesn't have any DMC codes so they basically have the number of colors and the symbols so how I'm gonna label these is basically just 1 to 12 and this key is small enough where I don't have to I'll just look at the symbol and know what I have to do with it so what I'm going to do is, first I'm going to make my labels. So basically on this canvas, one is color one, two is two, three is three, and so on, all the way up until we get to number nine, and then it's letters, A, C, D, E. So I'm just going to make labels that numbers 12 colors, and that's it. And that's how I'm going to, oops, print. I love this thing. I love this printer. I got this, um, <clears throat> this label maker for Christmas. And I love it.
Good thing I can count to 12, huh? <laughs> So, I was listening to um, a couple of YouTubers yesterday, and I came across an interesting topic. A lot of people are posting or coming on and doing whipping chats and whatnot, and telling you stories about their lives and how they met their husbands or boyfriends or whatnot. And... I have a very funny story, um, actually it's like, it's not, it's, it's, it's cute, I'm not gonna say it's funny, but part, parts of it was funny, and, um, I've been married twice, one gentleman, I, lived with him, I went out with him for 11 years, and then one day I woke up, which was a good thing. Never had children with him, thank God. So, how I met my husband now, which I've been married, uh, we got married in, uh, I met him in 1992, we got married in 95, um, So yeah, about, I don't know, we've been together for like 25 years. Seems like 37, but no, <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> um, I couldn't ask for a better man, I'll tell you that much. But when I met him, naturally all of you guys know I'm a smoker. So I was outside taking a break and having a cigarette outside of work. And at this point... I was just so done with men, I'm telling you, after the husband and whatever, but you know how that goes. <clears throat> so with that, I was outside smoking with a friend and there was my husband Bob, which was not my husband at the time, obviously, was outside. He was a smoker also at that point. And he was out smoking and standing near the door and making comments to all the women that were coming out of the door. And I just stood there and go, oh, I hate this new guy. He's such a snake. Um, and my girlfriend says to me, well, I got news for you. That snake is on his way over to talk to you. I'm like, I don't think so. And she's like, oh, yeah get ready. So, he comes over, and a very cocky man, very cocky man. Instead of saying hi, you know, he's, uh, he decides that he's going to be cocky and rude. So, he comes over and he goes, hey you, what's your ID on your computer? So, the per kind of person that I am, telling it like it is all the time and takes no shit from anybody, never did, never will, but anyway, I turned around and I said, I'm not hey you, and get lost, asshole, and that was my exact words, and he said, fine, I'll find you, so with that there, Got done smoking, went back upstairs, back to work. And back then we had mainframe computers. So you can actually, and he worked in the, he works in the computer industry. He always has, well, not always, but he's jack of all trades, actually. Construction, computers, chemist, whatever. So with that there, he says, I'm going to find you, and he goes upstairs. So I went upstairs, and um, so I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden I'm working, and this um, I threw out number one label. Ah, anyway, I'll make one. So 
not picking through the garbage, guys. So, anyway, <clears throat> with that there, I say, I'm working, rather. I'm sorry, I'm I can't do two things at once sometimes. So, with that there, I'm sitting there, and this message pops up. Hey, gorgeous, when are you going to take me out to dinner? Again, with the cocky stuff. Well, I fell for it. I wrote back, what do you mean when I'm, in, when I should, um, when I'm taking you to dinner? You should be taking me out to dinner. And <laughs> he said, fine, I'll pick you up at 8. <laughs> so with that there, I'm like, oh my god, I made this commitment now. I fell for this, and I'm going on this date. So, we decide there's a Charlie Brown's across the street, and I had told him, I'll tell you what, and it's right across the street, guys. I'm like, I'm not getting in the car with this dude. I don't like him, but it's a free drink, free dinner. I'm gone. So, and I needed, I needed to get out. So, with that there, I went, and I took my own car, and I went in, and I said to myself, I had it all planned out, I said to myself, you know what, if I don't like this guy, and if he really gets on my, plucks my last damn nerve, I am going to go excuse myself and go into the bathroom and just get into my car and leave. <laughs> but this was a very weird date. A date that like I've never been on before. And I cannot get this piece off here. My nails are too long or something. Or I think the labels are too long. I cut them. I mean, short. I'm little. <laughs> Again, with the blah, 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 blah. So, I don't know. It was kind of like, the, the date was very unique. And this guy actually sat across from me and said to me, okay. I'm going to tell you right now, I've been through this, that, and the other thing, and at the end of all that, him telling me what has happened and gone and tell me about his life and stuff, he just said, and I'm not here to play games. So I'm like, oh really? Well, I've been through this, that, and the other thing, and I'm not here to play games either. So just get that straight, like, right now. So, he's like, fine. And then he just turned around and he looked at me and went, so what are you doing for the next 20 years of your life? And I looked at him and I'm like, I don't know. Because Bob is the type where he looks at the big picture. He looks at the future all the time. Where me, I just look at what's happening in the moment and just go through the motions. It's worked for me, anyway. But I deal with shit as it happens. And I, so I said, okay, Bob, I, I really don't know what I'm going to be doing. 20 years from now, and he says, well, I hope 20 years from now, we're sitting here, and we're doing exactly what we're doing now, just chatting and having dinner and a drink, and I thought, oh my god, this guy is so unique, I've never been on this date, like a date like this before, and... That's all she wrote. <laughs> We've been together ever since. 
And it's wonderful because we've both been married before. So we know, I mean, it's not perfect. You know, all guys have their faults and all women have their faults. Everybody has their faults. But I don't know, it's just so different. So, I mean, we just like hit it off. He's a wise ass, I'm a wise ass. And we've been together ever since. And then our second date was like actually on Valentine's Day. This was the 11th of February in 1992, guys. And then February, um, <laughs> and he lived an hour away from me. So I was in New York at the time. Yeah, New York. And he lived in New Jersey. I worked in New Jersey. So that's where I met him. I worked for Paramount Pictures slash Simon & Schuster Publishing Company at the time. So, um, yeah, credit and collections. Mm-hmm. I love that job, though. It was awesome. But, so, and it was funny because on Valentine's Day, our second date, and we were going up to, we decided we were going to meet, like, up at Bear Mountain, which is a Bear Mountain Lodge. It's like a lodge that you can go to, and you could stay there and stuff, but, you can go up there and go into their, they have a restaurant up there, so you can go, I cannot get these backings off these freaking labels. Damn it. So sit here and watch me pick at these freaking labels and never start my time in pain today. <laughs> so anyway, it was quite funny because at the time, um, I mean, this guy was, Bob was totally like opposites of me, opposite of me, you know. So, I never thought I'd be attracted to long-haired guy. I mean, his hair was longer than mine. It was way down in the middle of his back. And mine was short and punky at the time. And Bundy red. But, <laughs> um, so, when they say opposites attract, that's so true. So, but... The Valentine's Day it was funny because we ended up meeting at Bear Mountain and sitting by the fireplace and just looking at you and going, you all right? Oh my God, I'm going to die. I had a 102 fever and got dressed and went to meet him. He had a massive migraine and was sitting there dying. So we were both sitting by the fire and dying together. So that's... That's my story about my, how I met my husband. And uh, we have two beautiful, beautiful children. And I got lucky, no problems with uh, teenage years and whatnot. Nothing that, you know, was major or anything like that. So it was quite good. And, uh, yeah, I mean, what I like about one of the things I like about my husband is if we do argue, it doesn't last. It's like maybe a 20 minute argument. We both know, you know, say what you gotta say and then we walk away, go cool off, and then we come back and talk. And he's not one of these guys that have, has a hard time. Am I still going? Yeah, okay. He's not one of these guys that has a hard time apologizing. And it, basically, and what I'm trying to say is it is just good communication, thank God, which that I've never had. Um, I mean, just, My first husband, I don't regret for being with my first husband because my mom always taught me never depend on anyone, especially a man. That was the thing. And that is so true. And there's two sides to every story, you know, but my first husband had a problem with alcohol and we were young. 
and he just, I decided to quit, you know, having fun and basically to grow up. And he decided that he couldn't. So, you know, life works out, you know, and all I have to say is, I mean, he put me through hell. It took me four years to get divorced from this guy because he just didn't want to divorce and he thought that I was going to come back and blah, 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 blah. I can go on and tell you, you got a month of what he put me through in those four years. Taking parts out of my car so I can't go out, sitting in my driveway for days. I mean, every time I went out to the mailbox, he was there, he ended up moving. He just basically stalked my ass. And, oh my god. So, but, I mean, he just, he had a hard time with it. And, I felt bad, but at the same time, I mean, he was a wonderful guy if he wasn't drinking. And he never knew when to stop. So, and I tried everything. And I went to AA meetings with him. I talked to priests. I talked to, you name it. I went to Al-Anon to learn how to deal with it. And it just wasn't enough. It just wasn't enough because, bottom line, if someone is not ready to admit they have a problem, it's not going to get fixed. I don't care who it is. You got to have the right mindset and want to do something, and you know, with yourself. But you can fight and kick and scream and express your feelings, and if they don't want to do it. It ain't happening. So, it ended, but he drove me nuts for four years. Oh, my God. He would sit in the parking lot. He would drive, like, from New York to New Jersey to my job, sit in the parking lot just so he can, like, see what I'm doing, who I'm with. Oh, it was horrible. And many times I got in his face, like... <laughs> Leave me the hell alone. And back then, you know, I was living by myself and taking care of the house. And my mother died in 87. And I was having issues with my good old daddy, which is another story in itself. And, um, it's just, it was crazy. It was really crazy. And then he... <laughs> he would send over his brother. He was... My, my ex-husband had a family of 12 and this, two sets of twins. And he actually would send over his brothers to try to make a pass at me. So he can get me on something. Because back then, divorce was expensive. It's still expensive. And we both couldn't afford it. And I kept telling him, I'll pay half and you pay half. Well, no, you're going to come back to me. Blah, 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 blah. So, that wasn't happening. Because once Lori's done, Lori's done. And, um, yeah, granted it took me 11 years. But you know what? At least I woke up. <laughs> But, oh, I went through hell with that guy. But anyway, I'm sure everybody has that kind of story and horror stories. Everyone's got a story, you know? So, but I have two. I have a great husband now of 25 years and two beautiful children. My daughter Ashley is... 23, going on 24, and, well, actually, my daughter is 24 now, sorry, and, 
My son is 21. 22. Jesus. Good lord. And I and yeah, we Bob and I have been, you know, through a lot of ups and downs like a lot of people, you know, financially and back when everyone was getting laid off of their jobs and stuff, we were oh my god. We were hurting really bad and he got laid off of his job after 10 years, I got laid off after 7 years, and I'll tell you, it got so bad, we were getting money from, you know, I had to go on, well, in New York they call it welfare, or public assistance, whatever you want to call it, but, okay, did you know I put this six, this nine backwards, so it's a, a eight, do, you know, six doesn't come after nine more. Come on, get your shit in one sock. So, I mean, we were living on the generator, and we were losing our house, and we were going to the church for food, and we would actually sit and take old computers apart and stuff, and take all the copper and metals out of it, and scrap it, you know, just to put food on the table. So it was rough for many, many years. And the stress was unbelievable. So, I mean, I've gone, I have depression, I have anxiety, but it's all, you know, it's under control. Um, I've learned how to deal the best way I can with my depression and my anxiety. <clears throat> um, I don't take any meds for my anxiety anymore. I stopped taking it two years ago and that was the best, another great decision because come to find out it was just making my anxiety worse. So I said, you know what, I'm going to go get my butt some help and start talking to people and start talking to professionals and stuff and learn tools of once I start getting them, you know, how to deal with it, how to stop it, how to calm it down. And that's what I did. So, I mean, it's not for everybody and a lot of people can't do that. And way back when, when all this crap was going on, I wasn't able to do that, so I had to be on meds, but I don't like medicine. I don't even like taking an aspirin. Okay, I take aspirin and it makes me sleepy. <laughs> so, it's just, I don't know, everyone deals with it differently, and as as like everybody else, this um, this hobby is wonderful for me, and this is one of the newest tools that I keep my anxiety in check. <clears throat> Plus, so we decided, you know, okay, back in when I was living in New Jersey with Bob, I decided, you know, hey. Kids graduate from high school. There's no way we're going to be able to pay the mortgage on this house. They're going to take it. So we were like, you know what? We need a fresh start. Mortgage company, you know what? You want the house clean? Uh, take, you know, you want it? Take it at that point. You just get to the point where you just can't do nothing else. And I'm like, just take the friggin' house. I'm getting the heck out of here. And that's exactly what we did. We, you know, we told the mortgage company, you know what? We'll clean the whole house out, throw everything out, sweep the floor. But by law in New York and New Jersey, you can't just 
put someone, you know, foreclose on someone without helping them relocate. And there is relocating money for people out there. And a lot of people don't know that. But these companies, they foreclose on your house. You can just turn around and tell them, all right, you know what? You want me out? You want this? If you want everything out of the house and it's swept, give me relocating money. So that's how we were able to move and get a fresh start in Florida. So, best decision we've ever made. And then Bob got a job and he works from home. What the hell number am I on? Six. And I'll tell you guys, you know, I know a lot of you guys going through hard times and stuff. Been there, done that, I understand. And basically all you want once in a while, I mean, you want to have money. You want to live comfortably. Me, myself, I like to be rich as hell, but you know, I mean, that's unrealistic right now, but... I, we, we may do, and I really have to thank God, and I'm not, I'm far from, I'm not a religious, religious fanatic, but I'll tell you what, there is light at the end of the tunnel. I've been there, I've done that, and we're living comfortably, we live in a beautiful paradise, I can't ask for nothing else, everyone's healthy, and that's all that matters, so... As long as you're happy doing what you're doing and you're, you've got your health, you've got the world. That's how I look at it. They can't be, you know, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And at the time when you're going through stuff like that, you think, oh my God, is this ever going to end? Why me? Holy crap. You know, it's like, I mean, how much can a person take? Give me a break, you know? And sometimes you have to go through shit to get to the good stuff, I guess. So, I'm feeling you, but I feel your pain. And... message out to everyone that's struggling right now is there is light at the end of the tunnel and as long as you and your family and your husband or your boyfriend stick together I mean yes there's going to be stress you're going to butt heads once in a while because both of you you know are, are stressed and and whatnot but don't give up just don't freaking give up. Just keep trying, keep trying, and keep trying, and just do the best you can, you know? And just, and for people out there that you know, just, if you can't help financially or, or whatnot, just be there, because there's nothing like you being, feeling like shit, and just one of your friends, all they have to say is, it's going to be okay. You know, and sometimes that's all you just need to hear, is it's going to be okay. And it will. It will. And maybe not right now, and it seems like it's going to take forever, but it will happen. It will happen. You just got to really believe that, you know, and... You need to get out of talk to yourself like we usually do. <laughs> and just keep telling yourself, okay, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. Yep, it has to get better. I mean, it just... And you know what, guys? It could be a lot worse. That's how I look at it now. It could be a lot worse. It seems like your life is just falling and breaking and you don't know which way to turn, where to go. And I'll tell you what, it could be a lot worse. You could have no legs. You could have no arms. You know, I mean, you could be on your deathbed. You could be 
you know, you, since sometimes I know you don't see that stuff, but, and there's a lot more, trust me, when I was down and out, there's always somebody that has it worse than you do, always, been on both sides, feeling comfortable in life, and having absolutely nothing, I mean, literally not a pot to piss in, but it does work out, so just Keep your head up and just stick together as a family or as a boyfriend and girlfriend or marriage, whatnot, and you'll get there. I'm proof of it. All right, guys. Well, that's my story, and I've kitted up. I did this video, and I'm going to start my Marilyn. And so the next time, guys, if you like this video, hit like. If you don't like it, sorry. But, I'm me. I'm not gonna change. And, I tell it like it is. So if you don't like it, I'm sorry. Okay, anyway. Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, so you can be notified when I make my next videos. And I do my diamond paintings, and then I show them on my videos, so you'll always see, basically, you know, start and how it looks at the end. So, subscribe, and have a good day. Enjoy the Super Bowl. Love, live, laugh, and diamond paint. Until the next one, guys. Take care.